Hi, this is Carolyn Kinane with the Contemplative Sciences Center at the University of Virginia. And this is the third in a series of videos on the contemplative pause in course design, focusing on the contemplative pause in teaching and learning moments. And so if you haven't yet looked at the first video, please go ahead and do that for some context. So again, this will seem familiar to those of you who have read Rhonda McKee's recent book, The Inner Work of Racial Justice, or Mindful of Race by Ruth King, with the R-A-I-N, the RAIN meditation, being taken in moments of racial discomfort. And so this is a slightly different model. Um, when something difficult happens in a teaching moment, the invitation here is to notice yourself in the moment, bring awareness to how you're doing. For me, it's frequently heat in my ears, maybe sweaty palms, a knot in my chest, my mind is racing. I bring awareness to how I'm doing. I inquire into my intention, which could be kindness or bravery or justice. I bring presence to the situation, seeing it with fresh eyes, now that my fear and ego have been have shined a light on them. I practice discernment. I choose what to do. I take action, and then I reflect on what happened. Now, taking this pause may be a bit easier when I'm working asynchronous. And my colleague at the Center for Teaching Excellence here at UVA, Courtney McEnery, has a brief video demonstrating how an instructor could respond to a challenging teaching moment on a discussion board. One student posts a microaggression and shuts down conversation and things get tense. The instructor could avoid it, not respond at all, let the discussion board play itself out. The instructor could punt, shutting down the conversation and saying, we'll address this topic of feminism in class, but the instructor never addresses the interpersonal microaggression that's happened. And what Courtney recommends is taking a step back, reaching out to a colleague to get some perspective, checking in with her values, and then responding from a place of integrity and care. And so next, let's look at this framework in the context of grading. How often do you bring awareness to how you're doing and what you are bringing to the situation? For me, pre-grading is a great moment to check in with myself. What is my attitude? Where am I at in this moment? Bringing awareness to the fact that I am hungry or I'm achy or in a rush. I inquire what is called for in this moment. And it's helpful for me to think not so much of this as the quantity of time that it will take for me to grade this way, but the quality of time that I give to it. So grading for an hour while I'm multitasking, fighting hunger, feeling frantic, is very different from bringing my awareness and my presence to grading for an hour. Now, my experience has been practicing taking a contemplative pause in non-intense moments makes taking them in intense moments easier and more habitual. And so one practice that I use for myself is a mindfulness bell that uh, I downloaded to my computer. It goes off every hour, and every hour I step away, I take a few deep breaths, and I stretch. How am I doing? Where am I at? And here's the link to the one that I use. Now, if you are perhaps in the process of moving your face-to-face -face classes online, I'd invite you to take this opportunity to practice some awareness. That is, I invite you to check in with your relationship to technology and to your computer. Do you have trust? Do you have discomfort, resentment, familiarity, ease? Because this relationship will impact the kind of work that you do with your computer. Please forgive the long quotation, but I believe it's worth it. Increasingly, computers are being viewed as social actors, that is, objects with which we have a direct relationship and that influence the way we work, think, and feel. People may trust their computer or feel antagonistic towards their computer. The nature of this relationship directly affects the teacher and or student's ability to work with technology as a learning tool. It is very difficult to ask someone to work with an individual or computer who they feel is unethical, untrustworthy, or unreliable. A central aspect of teaching online is to draw attention to this relationship. The first questions we must ask ourselves should be related to our own relationship with technology. What is my thinking regarding online education? What is my relationship with technology? Do I approach technology with the same mindful inquiry that I might approach different forms of otherness? Am I open and receptive to this relationship? Or am I closed? And so I invite you to uh, in a moment, hit the pause button, literally take a contemplative pause and reflect. How do you feel about your computer? What is that relationship like? What are some assumptions you have about working online? What biases might you hold about teaching and learning online? Generally, how are you feeling about this work? Curious, nervous, bitter, comfortable, excited? 
hit the pause button. Take a moment. So this small exercise is a way to bring awareness to something that can be neglected and will definitely impact the experience. If I don't like being on my computer and I sit down to grade, I'm going to want to get it done quickly and my resistance to the computer will become resistance to and impatience with the student's work. Additionally, this exercise is a way to bring integrity into teaching and learning. What do I want students to be like? I should strive to be that way too. And so when I have resistance or fear, it's helpful for me to ask myself, what kinds of attitudes and dispositions do I want students to have as they are learning or trying something new in my class? And so moving from awareness to inquiry, I invite you to reflect what disposition, attitude, or way of being would you like to tap into as you take on this work? This word or phrase can be, once you have brought some awareness, you engage in some inquiry, this could be a word you come back to, to ground yourself in your values and your intentions for a moment. So I invite you to take a little bit of time to jot down some responses to this, and our next video uh, touches on some student activities to cultivate again for your time.